Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's program, our conversation with the Illinois Secretary of State, Jesse White. My name is Mariam Ahmed, and I am the current president of the Chicago Bar Association. And we are very grateful that you've taken time out of your day this afternoon to join us for this historic conversation. Jesse White is Illinois 37th Secretary of, of State. Secretary White was first elected to the office in 1998 and won landslide victories in 2002 in which he won all 102 counties. And again, in 2006, 2010 and 2014. On November 6, 2018, Secretary White was reelected to a record breaking six term, winning another landslide victory in which he earned over 3.1 million votes statewide, the most ever by a statewide candidate in a midterm election. Secretary White became Illinois' longest serving Secretary of State on May 30th, 2014. The Illinois Secretary of State's office is the largest and most diverse office of its kind in the nation, providing more direct services to the people of Illinois than any other public agency. Secretary White's office issues state ID cards, vehicle license plates and titles, registers corporations, enforces the Illinois Securities Act, administers the organ tissue donor program, licenses drivers, and maintains driver records. As state librarian, Secretary White oversees the state library and literacy programs, and as state archivist, he maintains records of legal or historic value. Under Secretary White's lead leadership, the use of new technology along with modernizing and streamlining, streamlining operations has significantly improved customer service. Wait times in facilities are shorter than ever before. Illinois has become a national leader in road safety as Secretary White strengthened DUI laws, reformed the truck driver licensing program and overhauled teen driving guidelines. As a result, traffic facilities have decreased, I'm sorry, as a result, traffic fatalities have decreased with drunk driving deaths down nearly 50%, teen driving deaths reduced by 51%. In 2014, Secretary White was inducted into the Illinois High School and College Driver Education Association Hall of Fame. Prior to his election as Secretary of State, Secretary White served as Cook County's Recorder of Deeds, a job to which he was first elected in 1992 and re-elected in 1996. Before that, he served 16 years in the Illinois General Assembly, representing the most culturally, economically, and racially diverse district in the state of Illinois. In 1959, Secretary White founded the internationally known Jesse White Tumbling Team to serve as a positive alternative for at-risk children residing in public housing in and around Chicago. Since its inception, more than 18,000 young men and women have performed with the team. Secretary White has spent 60 years working as a volunteer with the team to help youth stay away from gangs, drugs, alcohol, and smoking, and to help at-risk youth on a path to success. The program has received international praise. Currently, there are 51 members enrolled in college. 
In 2014, the Chicago Park District opened the Jesse White Community Center and Field House in honor of Secretary White's lifelong contributions to the community. In addition, a school in Hazelcrest, Illinois, was recently named for Jesse C. White and named the Jesse C. White Learning Academy. And Division Street in Chicago was designated Jesse White Way in honor of our Secretary of, of State. Secretary White served our country honorably as a paratrooper in the US Army's 101st Airborne Division and as a member of the Illinois National Guard and Reserve. He played professional baseball with the Chicago Cubs organization, which was followed by a 33 year career with the Chicago Public Schools as a teacher and administrator. Jesse White earned his Bachelor of Science degree from Alabama State College, now Alabama State University in 1957, where he was a two sport athlete earning all conference honors in baseball and basketball. In May, 1995, Secretary, of White, Secretary White was inducted into the Southwestern Athletic Conference Hall of Fame. He was an all city baseball and basketball player at Chicago's Waller High School, now Lincoln Park High School, and was inducted into the Chicago Public League Basketball Coaches Association Hall of Fame in 1995. In 1999, Secretary White was inducted into the Alabama State University Sports Hall of Fame. Born in Alton, Illinois, he now res resides on Chicago's north side. Today's moderator is John Shakota. John is a member and partner of the law firm Ehrenberg Golden and has nearly 35 years of trial and litigation experience. He represents publicly and privately held domestic and foreign business entities, lenders, employers, municipalities, and government bodies. He is also the current treasurer of the Chicago Bar Association. Terrence McConville has joined us today from the Illinois Secretary of State's office. He is Assistant General Counsel to the Illinois Secretary of State. Now, to our participants, I invite you during the course of this discussion to enter your questions, any questions into the question and answer box. We will reserve some time at the end of our dialogue with Secretary White to address some of the questions that you pose. So feel free again to enter your questions. And with that, I will exit and turn the program over to our honorable Illinois Secretary of State, Jesse White. Well, thank you very much for that fine introduction, uh, Madam President. To my good friend, John Shakota and Terry McConville, it's an honor for me to be before you today. I've had a wonderful life. I've enjoyed serving as the Illinois Secretary of State, running the largest Secretary of State office in the nation. I believe that when you take on a job, you should take on the responsibility that goes with it. And uh, I also have had the great pleasure of being the coach and founder of the Jesse White Tumbling Team, a group of young people uh, who I want to make sure that they stay up on the beaten path, stay away from gangs, drugs, and those negative aspects of life. After having graduated from Walla High School, which is now Lincoln Park, uh, I played a lot of basketball, a lot of baseball, but Beloit College said that they'd like to have me uh, to play basketball or attend their wonderful institution of learning. And uh, they realized the fact that I had not received, uh, did not get, did not participate, or did not have a degree in uh, in mathematics, and so they rejected me. So, Ripon College said we'd like to have you, but again, no trigonometry and, and no, not enough math. Northwestern University said we'd like to have you, but they did turn me down too because of the same reason. 
Tennessee State, which is in Nashville, Tennessee, said, we'd like to have you, but you're too short. You're only five, eight and a half. Alabama State College, which is in Montgomery, Alabama, indicated they'd like to have me to attend their wonderful institution of learning. And they were not concerned about my math, no, were they concerned about uh, anything else other than the fact that they heard that I was a pretty good basketball player. So as it turned out, I was admitted at Alabama State and uh, graduated uh, after having fulfilled my requirements. And then I decided after I'd graduated from Alabama State that I was gonna go back to Chicago, go out to Wrigley Field and try out for the Chicago Cubs. And as it turned out, there were about 350 ball players. They only took five and I was one of the five. Four days before going to spring training, I was drafted into the army. And uh, I had to, uh, I, after I graduated from uh, college, uh, I was drafted into the army. So instead of going to spring training with the Cubs, I ended up going to big street training. And while I was in basic training, I decided I want to learn how to jump out of perfectly good airplanes. So I went through jump school. And as it turned out, I received my wings. And after having graduated, after having finished college, and after having finished uh, the, uh, jump school, uh, I decided that I wanted to play baseball. And after I had finished my tour of duty, I became a lawmaker. And the list goes on and on. Bottom line is this. I've had a great career and I am the coach and founder of the Jesse White Tumbling Team. About 18,000 young people have come through the program. We have, uh, we do about 150 shows a, a year, keep these young people on the beaten path, out of harm's way and require them to maintain at least a C average in school. We want them to be leafless, smokeless, and pipeless. The only time we want them to practice pharmacy is after they've earned a white coat. We teach them to love their fellow man and woman and never ever dislike anyone because of race, creed, or color. And of course, uh, we have what is called a trunk party where we distribute to 550 young people uh, a trunk full of wonderful school supplies that will help them while they're in college. And so, as I indicated before, we should do all we can to help our young people to go tall and straight and make sure that we keep them on the beaten path, serve as a flat end of the tunnel, the safety net for them. When we do those things and more, society will be a better place for all of us. While I was at Alabama State College, Ralph Abernathy, the civil rights leader, indicated that the 12 pledges for the Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity, and that was one of the the 12, would attend this church. And the church was led by Dr. Martin Luther King. And while we were attending church, a young lady by the name of Rosa Parks sat in the wrong part of the bus. And as a result of having sat in the wrong part of the bus, uh, she was arrested. And at church, Dr. King said that uh, he had been asked by the city fathers to lead the effort to desegregate the Montgomery transit system. And he said that he was going to use an unviolent means approach in order to do so. After every basketball game, Dr. King would meet me and counsel me and assist me in any way possible um, after the, as I said, after every basketball game. And um, at church, he indicated that he had been asked to lead the effort to desegregate the Montgomery Transit System. And he said, I'm going to use an unviolent means approach in order to do so. And so while um, he was talking, he had also said that uh, he was a student of Gandhi and Gandhi was instrumental in bringing about the uh, independence for the Indians from, from the British. And they used the nonviolent means approach, which means that if you get struck on one cheek, you turn so you get struck on the other cheek. When I raised my hand, he said, Jesse White, what can I do for you? I said, Dr. King, you know, I'm from Chicago and we don't operate like that. And so he said, just follow the script. You do those things and more of society will be a better place for all of us. So with his guidance, uh, we were able to uh, desegregate the Montgomery transit system. And uh, it was the people in Montgomery and the people 
with in the South benefited tremendously from his efforts. Now I'd like to stop and maybe respond to any questions you may have, John Shakota. Thank you, Secretary White. It's a great pleasure and honor to have this opportunity. I wanna thank President Ahmad for um, organizing this. And she's been a tremendous Chicago Bar Association president and not only a great friend, but a mentor and an inspiration to me and legions of other lawyers and professionals throughout Chicago. So thank you, Mariam, again, for this opportunity. Mr. Secretary, it's great to be with you as always. Um, I, have a, I have a couple of questions for you and then we're gonna direct some to uh, Council McConville and then come back to you. But my first question is, what in your illustrious Secretary of State career, what is your proudest moment? My proudest moment is being elected to this office. Uh, what happened was I was a ward committeeman of the 27th Ward, and some of my precinct captains asked me to seriously consider running for the office of, of Secretary of State. I was the Cook County Recorder of Deeds at the time, and I said to them, I'm enjoying being the Cook County Recorder of Good Deeds. And they said, well, that's a wonderful job, <laughs> but we think that uh, you would do quite well serving the people of the state of Illinois. And so uh, I said, what is your pleasure? They wanted me to speak with Speaker Madigan to ask him for his support. But I had served in the General Assembly for 16 years with him, so I knew him, and I knew him well. And so in talking with him, he indicated that he thought that um, uh, I, I would not do well being the Secretary of State primarily because all of the people who were running for the various offices were from Cook County and he wanted Penny Severins, the Senator from Decatur, Illinois to be considered. And uh, he thought that that would be an, she would be an ideal candidate uh, for that position. And uh, I later found out that he was supporting a fellow by the name of Tim McCarthy. Tim McCarthy was a gentleman, was a secret service agent who was uh, shot when President Reagan was, was, was was shot. And as it turned out, I asked Speaker Madigan for a meeting and he indicated that uh, I would not be the person of his choice because uh, he had too many people from Cook County. And then I asked him who would he consider and he indicated pretty seven, but then he also said there's a fellow by the name of Tim McCarthy. And uh, he's uh, a Republican. I don't know him, but I don't trust him. And I think he's a Republican. But as it turned out, uh, Speaker Madigan, Tom Hines, uh, the Senator from uh, West Side, Lipinski, and uh, Ed Burke all circulated McCarthy's petitions. And of course, McCarthy lives in the Orland Park which did not speak well of Speaker Madigan when he said he didn't want anyone from Cook County to be considered for the Office of Sec Secretary of State. Well, as it turned out, I went back to him and I said to him that I was concerned about the fact that he said that I was from Cook County and that I should not be considered, but yet he considered uh, supporting uh, Tim McCarthy. And so he told me, don't waste your time, tell your friends not to waste their time and their money because Tim McCarthy is going to become the next Secretary of State for the state of Illinois because we think that he would do a better job for us than you. Well, as it turned out, we were successful in winning by 350,000 votes. And I, the next morning when I was in my office, uh, my secretary said that you have a visitor. I said, who would that visitor be? She said, Speaker Madigan. I said, well, bring the gentleman in. Well, he came into my office, he shook my hand, he hugged me, congratulated me, and indicated that uh, he wanted to support me in my effort to become the next Secretary of State for the state of Illinois. And now you know the, the rest of the story. My next opponent in the general election was Al Salvi, uh, a Republican lawyer. And uh, thanks to him and thanks to you and thanks to others, I had the great pleasure of serving people of the state of Illinois for 22 and a half years. My mission is to not only take on the job, 
but the tickle and responsibility goes with it. Mr. Secretary, your life has been such an inspiration to me and so many others. You are, in my mind, the quintessential public servant. You define it. You are it. In that regard, what would you like your legacy to be? That not only did I take on the job, but I took on the responsibility that goes with it. That when it comes to our young people, uh, I, I made it possible for over 18,000 young people to become better educated, better informed, and to receive the guidance and the love that they need in order to become a success in life. That I cared and I gave. And I believe that uh, with our young people, we have to do all we can to help them to go tall and straight and put them in a posture by which they can help run this great country of ours. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Um, I want to now direct a couple of questions to Council McConville. Uh, Council, thank you for being here today. Um, we really appreciate it. So my first question is, how did the COVID-19 pandemic impact the Secretary of State's operations? Well, first and foremost, uh, thank you for having me at this webinar uh, with my boss, uh, Secretary of State, Jesse White. I've worked for Secretary White for, at this office for 22 years, and Mr. White has always been an inspiration to me and a role model as well. In answer to your question, um, I can speak mainly as to the Department of Business Services, because that is the department um, that I am counsel for, although I am also part of uh, General Counsel Irene Lyons, General Counsel staff. In the, uh, uh, when the pandemic hit in mid-March, uh, the office shut down for approximately two and a half months uh, through June 1st, except for a very small skeleton crew uh, that handled paper filings of documents. What we did at that point in time was we stressed and put out uh, that and promoted uh, the use of online filings. And uh, online filings are available for almost all of the filings that are done um, at the Department of Business Services with the exception of uh, certain specialized filings. At the same time, uh, we had entered um, uh, several emergency rules that number one, suspended the 10 day uh, rule for filing of business service documents and the uh, 24 hour rule for um, filing of expedited documents. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the office uh, abated penalties and interest uh, for quite a, a long period of time. Uh, around June 1st, uh, much of the staff was permitted uh, uh, to work from home, and we proceeded in, in that phase, as did you know, most of the rest of the country. Um, and we continued to work from home uh, until the fall of 2020. At, at the same time, during this time, uh, we had a slightly larger skeleton crew on uh, uh, in the office to handle uh, specialized filings and any other emergencies um, that came up. Um, in the fall uh, of 2020, the department returned to, uh, to the office full time and resumed normal operations. Um, uh, that was until late in the year, until uh, the second surge appeared. And at that point in time, um, we started to, to phase in uh, a split schedule of part time, uh, partly working out of the office and partly working uh, at home. Um, the, uh, we went back to full time uh, in the office on February 28th, 2021. Uh, and have been since. And I would like to say that we are, have been the only office in the state of Illinois that has been in the office uh, for much of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic period. And one last uh, final note, the um, uh, penalties and interest uh, were resumed uh, on around uh, September 28th. Of well, thank you. Uh 
Mr. McConville for and and sec Mr. Secretary for having the offices open. I know that was a great help to many of our Chicago Bar Association members that deal intimately with the Illinois Secretary of State's Business Services Department. Um, that's very important to many of us, including me, and for my clients. Um, what improvements did the Secretary of State's office implement during the pandemic that will actually continue after businesses fully reopen? The main thing is that we have really uh, gone overboard in terms of handling the online filing of documents. Uh, the uh, breadth of documents that are now available uh, to be filed online it is the, the great majority of the documents uh, that we have. There's very few documents that need to be filed um, you know, in paper, uh, and it's only, uh, you know, a very few specialized documents, all of the annual reports, uh, for all of the different business organizations can be filed online and reinstatements and, and what have you as well. Uh, also what tips, Mr. McConville, can you offer to our business lawyers that are members of our Chicago Bar Association to better utilize the Illinois Secretary of State's business services? Well, at, at this point in time, since we've renewed, um, you know, office uh, uh, or in-person in the office, um, you know, anyone can come into the office and get whatever types of um, assistance that they may need. But at the same point in time, we are still um, promoting uh, the continued use of online filing, mainly because it's instantaneous and done in real time. And as soon as you file the documents uh, online, uh, those documents you can, right after you're done, you can go into the, the website or just switch, switch screens and see that the uh, filings that you have just made uh, have appeared on our website. They are you know, added directly into our database right then and there. And, you know, there's, there's no questions, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Thank you, Mr. McConville, for those insights. I know we may have some questions for you a little bit later in our program from our members, but obviously the Secretary of State's office is integral uh, to all of us, uh, but certainly to business lawyers that need to utilize the business services. So we appreciate what you have done with Sec under Secretary White's leadership in terms of making the business services areas, um, you know, user friendly to the practitioner on behalf of our clients. So I now want to turn it back to Secretary White. And, and the idea here is obviously to allow our members to get to know someone like you who is devoted his entire life to public service, to children, to education, and to so many things. So um, you obviously were born in Alton, Illinois, Madison County um, in 1934 and lived there until 1943. So Mr. Secretary, can you tell us what was your earliest childhood memory and how was it growing up in Southern Illinois? But as you, as was indicated, I was born in Alton, Illinois. That's across the river from St. Louis. And uh, whenever it would rain, uh, we would have to do a little swimming because I lived in an area called Dogtown, which was like down near the wasteland, the bottom of the pit, so to speak. Not a good location, but probably the poorest section of Alton, Illinois. And then when uh, I reached the age of seven, my family moved to Chicago, the near north side, in a predominantly Italian neighborhood where you have to learn to speak Italiano a little bit, Capis Italiano. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's a w w wonderful area. And I fully enjoyed attending the Schiller Elementary School where I went back and taught for uh, 25 years. And then, of course, Lincoln Park High School, which is now Walla High School, was Walla High School, there's Lincoln Park now. And I just had a wonderful upbringing, learned to speak a little Italiano, enjoyed the food, had a great relationship with the people. 
I just believe that when you come through this world, you become successful, you get back, and you do all you can to be the best you can. And I also believe, too, that when you can speak someone else's language, eat their food, learn their dance, learn about their culture, it makes for a good relationship. Mr. Secretary, of course, you know Oak Street well. You grew up there. You obviously grew up with you know many Italian people that were there and were immigrants, and and you were friends with sons and grandsons of immigrants. What did that? What did that experience? How did that influence you, Jesse White? Well, um, I was I was impressed, and I had found love in my heart for, for the Italian people because I was raised up in their community, learned to speak their language a little bit, learned that dance, learned about their culture. When you do those things and more, uh, it's a win-win situation for all of us. I used to work at a grocery store at, owned by Mr. Sam Aiello. And he would say to me, he says, Bucky, that was my decade. He said, Bucky, will you uh, open the light in about 10 minutes? I want you to close the delight. What he was saying was, I want you to turn the light on. And then 10 minutes later, I want you to turn the light off. Great family uh, grocery store. The people in the neighborhood got along well. And as I said before, if you can speak their language a little bit, learn that lesson about their culture, it's a win-win situation for all of us. So you attended uh, Schiller Elementary School, and then you, of course, attended Waller High School, which is now Lincoln Park High, and you uh, attended Alabama State University um, to play baseball and to play basketball, of which you were uh, an outsta- a star in high school. So can you tell our, our members, uh, Mr. Secretary, what was the experience like for you attending college in the South in the 1950s? Well, the first day, uh, well, first of all, my mother is from Arkansas, Earl, Arkansas, and my father is from Carruthersville, Missouri. And when I told them that I had uh, received a scholarship to Alabama State, and they want to know, uh, I really want to go to the South because they had lived in the South and they were treated in a disrespectful manner. And they just didn't want me to have to undergo that kind of treatment. And as it turned out, everything, my scholarship was good. I got along well with the people, but some of the people down there were a little upset with me because I didn't like, I didn't, I have a, had a love for everyone and I did dislike uh, the whites, white people. And so I got on a bus, sat, Right behind the bus driver, uh, the blacks who were sitting in the back of the bus were waving to me, beckoning to me to come back. And as it turned out, the bus driver turned around, saw me sitting behind him, and he said, oh, boy, can't you read? I said, what are you talking about, sir? He says, well, you said science, auto science. The white arrow pointed, the one, one arrow pointed to the front, it said white, and the other arrow pointed to the rear, and that said colored. And I said, well, I paid you my fare. Your job is to drive the bus, leave me alone. Well, he says, well, I'll take good care of you. So as he's going down the hill, there's a squad car right by the Texaco gas station. And he stopped the bus and he was getting off to hail this police officer to come to arrest me or do whatever he, he thought he should do with me. And an individual with a car went through the red light. And so the squad car took off after him. So he never got a chance to do anything to me. But when I got off the bus downtown, I was surrounded by the people who were on the bus, the, the blacks. And they were telling me about uh, how tough things are down here, how unfair they are. And so I learned to deal with that environment. And it also it reinforced my belief that we should do all we can to love our fellow man and woman. And so as a result of deaths of Dr. King and others, they were able to desegregate the Montgomery transit system. They desegregated the lunch counters and they, they made it possible for a better life for the, the African-Americans who lived in the South or who visited the South or who 
who, who have had anything, any dealings with people in the South. That's that's tremendous, Mr. But Secretary. I have, John, I have one more thing I have to tell you too. Yes. There's a young lady by the name of Helen Binion. She said to me, if uh, you're in anywhere near Chattanooga, Tennessee, does somebody just stop off and see me? It's okay, fine. So I called her and I said, I'm going to be right near you in uh, Knoxville. I said, is it okay for me to stop off and see? She said, sure. So when I entered her house, she said, what would you like to do? I said, I'd like to visit Lookout Mountain. And so she said, fine, let's go. So we went up the cable car and after we got to the top, I went over to the water fountain. There are two water fountains, one that said colored, one that said white. And so I drank from the water fountain that said, well, it said white. And so a gentleman, white fella came out from one of the offices and he said, boy, can't you read? I said, yes, I can. He said, what's the problem? He said, there are two signs there, white and colored. And you drank out of the fountain that said white. I said, well, by the way, sir, let me show you something. I reached into my jacket, pulled out my driver's license. It says, Jesse White. I said, sir, you see that? It says, white. And said, sign up there? It says, white. And he didn't know what to do. And so I had a pretty good chuckle with him. That's great. But um, So, Mr. Secretary, and this is a, you know, I love baseball. You love baseball. So, after college, you signed with the Cubs organization, our favorite team. And I want to know, did you interact with Ernie Banks and Billy Williams and Ron Santo? Can you tell us about that? Okay. Uh, I was sent down to Mesa, Arizona, and they had all of the different classifications, the major league team, the triple A team, the double A, A, B, C, and D. And after supper, we would all meet at this particular restaurant and Ernie Banks would hold court. He would tell us all about what we should do, how we should conduct ourselves to, in order to make it to the majors. And, and so as it turned out, uh, we took pictures and we became the best of friends. And Ernie Banks was a fellow who counseled all of us to make sure that we kept our nose clean, followed all of the rules and regulations. And he said that if we do those things and more, success is right around the corner. So Ernie Banks uh, was, was my idol and my good friend. Mr. Secretary, of course, the tumblers have been such a big part of your life and your legacy, and you've You've inspired and touched so many children over the years. When did you first get the notion to create the Jesse White tumbling team? Well, when I was a youngster living right near Seward Park, I used to go to the park and a fellow by the name of Vince Schoenfelder, a German fellow, taught me gymnastics. And so when I received my scholarship to college, I played baseball, basketball, and I taught gymnastics. And so when I finished playing baseball, I, or better yet, every summer when I would come home from college, George Dunn, uh, who was the president of the Cook County Board and the war commitment of the 42nd War, would make sure that I always had a summer job. And summer job really consisted of me working for the park district and primarily teaching gymnastics. And so, Later on, uh, worked for the Park District, was asked to pull the gym show. From the one gym show in December 1959 came to Jesse White Tumley team. We are 61 years of age as we, as we speak. And uh, we've taken these young people all over the world. Zagra, Croatia, Belize, Israel, China, Tokyo, Japan, Hong Kong, Honolulu, Hawaii, Honolulu, the list goes on and on. And these young people have gotten a chance to see the world. They get compensated for uh, their performances and uh, they benefit tremendously from uh, being a part of this wonderful program. Uh, 18,000 young people have come through the program. It's 61 years old as, I, as we speak. We have 150 young people who are actively involved with this program. And on July the 4th, uh, we will 
do 42 parades. You know, really in, in, in life, Mr. Secretary, you know this better than anyone. Young children need direction. They need role models. They need father and father figures. And I think you have been the, uh, the epitome of what that's all about to these young people. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm very proud to have been a supporter of the tumblers and of you and the positive effects that you've had on these young people. Um, so let's sort of transition now into your political life, which has been, you know, such a great example of what public service is all about. When did you first become interested in politics? Well, every Monday night, I would meet with George Dunn, pertinent, who was a war committeeman, and the president of the Cook County Board, and Alderman Burton at Terrace, Mike Siegel, and we would meet at the ward headquarters in at State and um, at Oak Street. And after we would finish listening to the problems of the people, we would go over to uh, a restaurant, uh, Eli's restaurant over on Chicago Avenue, and we would eat and then we would then disperse and we would always could communicate with each other by way of phone. And then later on, President Dunn said, Robert Thompson, our state representative, is retiring to Kosopolis, Michigan. And I'd like for you to seriously consider uh, running for state representative. I said, uh, I'm enjoying knocking on doors, circulating petitions, encouraging the people to come out and support the candidates of our choice but I don't think I would do very well being an elected official. He said, I think you'll do just fine. Well, I used to go skiing every weekend. It's just a mountain in Manselona, Michigan. And it's one hill I was unsuccessful in going down. And so on this particular Sunday, I went down 12 times without falling. And I said, if I could handle this hill, I could handle the political arena. So that Monday morning, I called President Dunn. And I indicated to him that I was prepared to run for state representative. And he said, great, you'll do fine. So I said, Mr. President, what does the district consist of? He said, oh, about 100,000 people. I said, what is the ratio makeup of the district? He said, oh, about 83% of white, 12% black, 5% others. I said, well, what, is, what areas does it cover? He said, it starts at Fullerton, goes far, as far south as the Chicago River, and then from Lake Michigan, over to the North Branch of the Chicago River. I said, that's like two strikes against me and a curveball coming up against me. He says, you do quite well. So I ran and I served for 16 years as state representative running the most diverse district in the nation. Mr. Secretary, what was the best political advice you ever received and who gave it to you? President Dunn is probably the, the one and he, reminded me of something that I had, had been a part of me for a long period of time. And that is a winner never quits and a quitter never wins. And he also said too, that uh, when someone says that you cannot achieve, you say, watch me. And so those are some things that uh, I'll always remember. And then of course, love your fellow man and woman and never ever dislike anyone because they race, creed or color. If someone says you cannot achieve, as I said before, watch me. That's great advice. What political positions and what experience in your life have prepared you best to become Illinois Secretary of State? Well, I think being a lawmaker, and I served there in the Illinois General Assembly for 16 years, and being the Cook County Recorder of Deeds, which I served for six years. And of course, the Secretary of State for 22 and a half years, the largest Secretary of State office in the United States. Mr. Secretary, Mayor, our late Mayor Richard J. Daly used to say that the best training is to first be in the General Assembly. Why did he say that? What, 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 is, what was your experience like and why would Mayor Richard J. Daly have always said that? I don't know why he always said it, but 
uh, after you've done it, have gone through the training, then that, you can appreciate his spoken words. What did the, how was your experience in the General Assembly? I know you really enjoyed it and you represented your district really well, but what, what attributes did you learn about yourself and about being in the General Assembly that have helped you in your life? Well, I represented one of the most diverse districts in the nation. Lincoln Park, the Paul River, North Street of Ville, the Gold Coast area, the Magnificent Mile, Cabrini Green, and the list goes on. So it's 83% of white, 12% black. And when you're down in Springfield, number one, you have to make sure you represent the people of your district. And it was easy for me to do so because I enjoyed a working with good working relationship with all of the members. And of course, back home with the wars, the 42nd, 43rd, uh, 33rd, and the 42nd, 43rd, 47th wards. And I had to go into those various communities to find out what their concerns were and work toward their satisfaction when it came to legislation. Mr. Secretary, what tips would you have to some of our members and those that are participating today that may one day wish to journey upon a, a life of public service, whether it be the judiciary or public office? What, what advice would you give them? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Madam uh, President Ahmad, I, I know her. She not only has taken on the job, but she has taken on the responsibility that goes with it. So I just want her to know that uh, we admire and respect you. And not only did you take on the job, but you're doing a wonderful job in the discharge of your duties. And your question again, uh, Mrs. Sh what, Chico what What tips would you give someone who is interested in a life of public service, whether it be the judiciary, running for office, the judiciary, or some other public office. Make, make sure you know the lay of the land, so to speak. The people that you represent, make sure that you represent them in a manner which they can be proud. Uh, treat people, all people, the way you like to be treated. And not only should you take on the job, but just take on the responsibility that goes with it. And if you say you're going to do something, you have to do it to the best of your ability. And if they say, oh, you never return my call, and that's one of the biggest things that I, I find in politics, when you, a person, one of your constituents would call you and you were not there, they spoke to your answering service and you never returned their call, or you spoke to the secretary and they never received a call back from you. Uh, that, that's ugly. And when people, and I know that there are some politicians today that fall into that category that I refuse to be associated with or refuse to contact them or try to communicate with them in any other form. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, Council McConville. Um, it's been a really delight and I think you have really um, had a great message to our members and our participants here today. I'll turn it back over to President Ahmad who will uh, I think we're going to have a question and answer period for the next 10 minutes. Yes, thank you thank very much. You. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you, Secretary White and Mr. McConville. Thank you. There is a question in the chat, and I'm actually going to address this to you, Mr. McConville. Um, the questioner says sometimes it's difficult to find how to file business documents online. Will improvements be made uh, to the website to make it more user friendly? Well, uh, improvements are always being made to the website. Uh, and, you know, we like to think that the, um, that the website is user friendly. The main thing to do is to, to follow the prompts. Now on the homepage, there are a number of um, you know, uh, uh, icons or uh, links there uh, to certain business services matters, as well as those for the other departments in the Secretary of State's office, like for driver's license and 
uh, <laughs> uh, plates and stickers. Um, the other thing is up on the top of the website, there are a number of um, uh, headings and up there, uh, the, the first one says, literally the first one on the top left says services. And if you click on services, it will then drop down into all of the different types of services that are available on our website. And after that, you hit business, uh, which, you know, that's kind of self-explanatory. And once you go from there, if you just follow in a logical progression from business, it then goes into the types of business organizations and the, the different types, uh, whether it's publications and forms or, you know, uh, uh, foreign or domestic corporations, limited liability companies, et cetera. And it just, if you follow the prompts, you can get directly to anything. Or if you go into the heading under departments, then you can go to the Department of Business Services and come at it from that particular way. Um, but as I said, you know, uh, we are constantly trying to make the website um, user friendly. Thank you. Um, John, would you mind if I ask Secretary White a question? Oh, of course, please. Secretary White, we know you are one of the hardest working individuals in the state of Illinois. And knowing that, we would like to know when you're not working, what do you do in your spare time? Well, my hobby is your hobby and that, that's fishy. <laughs> uh, I spend a lot of time, when I have some spare time, I like to go fishing in Lake Michigan and some of the lakes here in Illinois. Matter of fact, we have some of the finest fishing uh, places in the country here in the state of Illinois. It's a hidden secret. A lot of people don't know that, the, that those wonderful lakes and streams are here, but uh, we're loaded here in Illinois. And if you, if you don't have to go to Canada, you don't have to go elsewhere, just stay here in Illinois and you'll be amazed at the wonderful fish that you'll be able to catch. So you, you've revealed a secret about me. I am an av avid fisherwoman. Twice a, uh, twice a month in the summer, if I'm lucky, every month. So uh, in light of what you just said, where is the best local spot to go? Are well, you willing to share your secret? Well, if you, Canton, Illinois, that's, that's a good, good county. That's a good city. Mm -hmm. I'm writing it down. Good, it's a, well, I'll take, well, I'll make sure we take you there. Canton, Illinois. That's my, my promise to you. All right. Sounds That's good. Great. Good and, job. And, and, Final questions. I have a question for the secretary, and I have uh, I'm a fisherman as well and enjoy it very much as the secretary and Mariam, as President Ahmad knows. Um, so maybe we have to all get together and go fishing. That'd be fun. Hey John, my let's question, do that. We will do let's, that. Let's my do question it. to you. Mr. Secretary is, what would you really like to do after your final term as Secretary of State ends? What's your plan? Well, I'd like to continue to fish and I'd like to continue to jump out of airplanes. I did 35 jumps with the 101st Airborne Division. And of course, uh, continue to work with the tumbling team. Uh, we've been able to save a lot of young people's lives and put them on a posture by which they, they cannot participate with us if their grades fall below, below par, which is a C average. And uh, that's basically it. I like to, I love the fish. And so uh, I'm going to do a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Secretary, Alderman David Moore um, wrote a reply in the question and answer box. He wanted you to know that you have always inspired him. And he said that um, although he could not do flips as in gymnastic flips, he uh, started an organization called More for Youth to give youth access and opportunities. He wanted to know who gave you your, your access or seat at the table as a young man. Well, George, George Dunn, the former president of Cook County Board, uh, he, along with a fellow by the name of Fred Ross, who was one of our teachers, Vince Schoenfelder, 
Um, the list goes on and on of people who reached out, put their arm around me, gave me some encouragement, directed me on the right path. Uh, it's the, the melting pot. When you get it, you give it back. And as I said before, do something good with someone every day. I work with young people and I've taken them all over the world mm -hmm. and they have become better human beings as a result of it. They have to maintain at least a C average in order to remain active in our program. Otherwise, they have to take part in our tutoring program. So we put pressure on these young people to, in a way by which we can guide them in the right way. So put some between your ears every day other than scalp. We're talking about knowledge and that will carry you far. Okay. In life, I want you to always look up and aim high. And when time I want you to look down, it's so tie your shoes. But you also have to love your fellow man and woman and never ever dislike anyone because of race, creed, or color. You cannot play that card. That's the ugly card. And you can never play that one be a part of anything that I'm associated with. Well, that's a fantastic way to end our program today um, with uh, a word about love and respect of one's fellow man. Secretary White, thank you so much for joining the Chicago Bar Association today for this webinar. It has been an honor, our honor and privilege uh, to speak with you today and uh, to have you come on and, and meet with our members and community at large. And Mr. McConville, thank you so much for joining us today. My, to my friend, John Shakota, Aaron Berg golden thank you for loaning uh, you to us for this afternoon's conversation and to our viewers, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us and we hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Be safe, happy, and healthy. Goodbye. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.